So uh, my outline of my uh, presentation and the discussion uh, is today. First, I will briefly discuss about the few forms of leishmaniasis. And then I will also present uh, the burden of leishmaniasis in our region. Uh, briefly discuss on the control and, and of course, uh, more on the challenges and how we can work together to overcome this. So, uh, you know that most of all, you know, uh, better uh, uh, about the leishmaniasis. I just want to refresh our knowledge and the, the, what we know about it. So, uh, the leishmania is a parasite uh, which is uh, uh, transmitted by the female sand flies. There are four forms of leishmaniasis. Uh, one is cutaneous, so which cause the uh, skin lesions and if not timely treated, leads to the most ulcers. And this, uh, if uh, the pa 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 patients does not get treatment early enough, uh, then this, uh, even though we uh, treat them, the scars may uh, last and lifelong. So this is, uh, this is also causing a serious uh, kind of stigma and mental health problems, especially uh, if uh, the leishmania uh, skin lesions happen in the exposed areas of our body. So mainly it is in the face and the hands. That's why if uh, a female gets the, get a sand fly bite and get the leishmaniasis, and then if uh, she uh, doesn't get the treatment on time, the scar may leave the life uh, the last for long. So that's why it also causes stigma and mental health problems. Uh, leishmaniasis is also another disease which is associated with the poverty, uh, mainly the poor, poor housing because this facilitates the uh, uh, sand fly breeding. And then uh, uh, the population migration, which is very common in our region, also increased this problem and spread it to the, from endemic areas to the non-endemic areas also. And lack of uh, financial resources also associated with the uh, severity of the disease because people don't uh, seek uh, uh, treatment early. And of course, malnutrition and weak immune system are the other causes which are associating with this disease. Uh, so let's see a few uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis lesions. So this is the kind of ulcerative lesion on the face of a young girl. And even uh, she had treatment, this scar will be there for, uh, throughout her life. So that is why it is also ca causing a lot of uh, social problems for these young ladies and children who get this disease. This is a boy with the lesion. And then even after treatment, this uh, scar will be there. The other form of the leishmaniasis is the visceral leishmaniasis, which is also co common in our region, uh, which causes the fever, weight loss, enlargement of the spleen and liver and anemia. And if the pa patient doesn't receive treatment, it can, uh, it can, this disease can be fatal. And then the post are dermal leishmaniasis. This is a sequel of the visceral leishmaniasis, which five to 15% of the people who had visceral leishmaniasis during the two to three years after the treat, full cure of the disease, will get a rash on the skin. And the important part of this uh, disease is that the people are considered to be potential source of, of the visceral leishmaniasis infection. And this is also just like the cutaneous leishmaniasis is associated with poverty, population displacement, poor housing, and lack of financial resources. The other form of the leishmaniasis is the cutaneous leishmaniasis. More than 90% of the disease are mainly in Bolivia, Brazil, and Peru. So this is a clinical presentation of the visceral leishmaniasis with enlarged uh, spleen and liver. So let's see the, our, the situation of leishmaniasis in the WHO Eastern Mediterranean region. In our region, uh, we all know that there are 22 countries. So leishmaniasis is a major public health problem and is endemic in 18 countries. Only three countries are spared uh, by this disease. They are Bahrain, Qatar, and UAE. That means they are, 
uh, we don't get the local uh, uh, cases, autochthonous cases, or the local transmission of the cases. Of course, these countries also report imported cases. So I, as I said, it is uh, endemic in 18 countries and our region carries the 76% of the cutaneous leishmaniasis burden. So this is a significant public health problem in our region. And the, out of these uh, parasites, the leishmania tropica and leishmania major are the uh, parasites which are mainly cause this uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis in our region. So the, the disease is mainly treated through the clinical diagnosis and treatment with antimonials. So let's see the uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis situation over the past uh, uh, few years. Uh, in 2019, more than 80% of the cases were reported from three countries, and they are Syria, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. So if we concentrate our efforts to control the disease in at least in these three countries, uh, uh, we can reduce our uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis burden in our region. Then the visceral leishmaniasis is also endemic in 18 countries and the largest burden is in Sudan, followed by Somalia, Yemen and Iraq. Oops, sorry. So here also the, over the last uh, few years, you can see the burden. So it's always mainly in uh, Sudan, but we can see that over the years, the leishmania, visceral leishmaniasis burden in Sudan has significantly decreased. And that is mainly attributed to the uh, supply of the uh, safe and effective drugs to Sudan free of charge through the WHO medicine donation program. Uh, actually, uh, for the, uh, I mean, comparing with cutaneous leishmaniasis and visceral leishmaniasis, the support uh, for the countries to treat the visceral leishmaniasis is more than the support to cutaneous leishmaniasis through WHO. Even the donors uh, have uh, agreed to supply the, uh, the very effective treatment like embisome uh, for free of charge to uh, African countries, uh, which, are, uh, which has the high burden of visceral leishmaniasis. But for the cutaneous leishmaniasis, the story is not the same. Cutaneous leishmaniasis is a very often disease and no one pay, uh, pay any, uh, much of attention, especially the donors, they don't pay much of uh, attention and it is very difficult. It's one of the problems we are uh, facing in our region. We will discuss it during our challenges. So what are the uh, measures we can take to control leishmaniasis in our region? Of course, they are not that we are taking all the measures, but these are the measures we can take, case management, because of the, the, uh, if the cutaneous leishmaniasis is mainly caused by leishmania tropica, it's an anthropogenic disease. So if we detect the cases early and treat, and then we can control the cutaneous leishmaniasis caused by the leishmania tropica. And then, of course, the veterinary public health, because uh, uh, the, in the uh, life cycle of the uh, leishmaniasis parasite, there is a part, uh, there, uh, have, there is an animal uh, reservoir host. So if we can control this, and then there, is a, there will be a significant uh, contribution to control the disease. But as we all know, controlling animal reservoir is not an easy task, especially uh, when it's for the, when the, Cutaneous leishmaniasis, the rodents are uh, one of the leading uh, animal reservoirs, so it's controlling rodents in these uh, poor socioeconomic situations. It's not an easy task. Uh, in the glo uh, for the visceral leishmaniasis, there are uh, trials uh, being carried out to evaluate the vaccination of dogs so that the, they will not carry the uh, visceral leishmaniasis as an animal reservoir host, but it is not very successful. Then vector control, I will not discuss about vector control because there'll be a whole session on that. Uh, this is insecticide spraying, insecticide treated nets. And then environmental management also important because the our housing, most of the sand fly breeding places are housing or surrounded area. So these kind of uh, houses uh, facilitate the sand fly breeding. 
So what are the challenges we uh, uh, face in our region of controlling uh, uh, leishmaniasis? Medicine supply. As I said, there is no continuous supply of antimonials to help facilities in many countries in our region, specifically to treat the cutaneous leishmaniasis. The countries face, this is a huge challenge. And then uh, even you can, when we take the global supply of medicines to treat the le uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis, there are very few suppliers who, who are supply manufacturing these medicines. So the countries, even when they want to procure, some, most of the countries face difficulties in procuring quality assured medicines because there are no sufficient suppliers in the global market even. And, and in our region, most of the countries doesn't have a good drug regulatory uh, system. So that's why there is a filtration of substandard antimonials into the countries. We are this, especially the countries like uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, there is an uh, influx of uh, substandard antimonials and uh, treating with them will not solve our problem. Uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis can be treated not only by the medicines, there is a, a, uh, they can be treated by cryo and thermotherapy. We call them physical treatment due to the uh, lack of financial resources mainly and also the lack of capacity. And uh, they are the most of the countries, they don't have sufficient equipment to use uh, and treat the patients with the cryo and thermotherapy. This is another big uh, challenge we face in our region. Even uh, we can, we mobilize, we, if even we mobilize financial resources at our regional level or global level to procure these equipments, still the countries will face uh, problems in maintaining the equipment. Poor surveillance. Uh, most of the countries, the leishmaniasis surveillance still uh, go, uh, is a kind of a standalone uh, program. It is not well integrated into the health information system of the country. So this is another problem we face. And it is estimated that uh, annually, this region reports about uh, 200,000 or more cases, but uh, it, it is estimated that our case load list must be at least two to three times, two to three times more than that because of the poor surveillance. We don't get the uh, actual case load reported to the uh, regional and global level. Then there is very limited research carried, conducted mainly to uh, mainly to assess the cost effectiveness of control in interventions. Among these control interventions, which I presented, only we are still mainly targeting at uh, case management. There is no very, very little we do in uh, con vector control, uh, and animal reservoir host, host control, and environmental management. So there's, this is why we always uh, uh, request the countries, if possible, to do uh, this uh, cost and effectiveness uh, comparison of the intervention so that we can advocate on them. And then the uh, inadequate capacity is also a big challenge, especially at the primary healthcare level. Uh, uh, this disease is, is associated very much with poverty. So the people who are affected by this disease, they, are, they, they don't have financial resources to reach to the secondary and tertiary care level hospitals for the treatment and care. So it is very important that in this region, the countries which has a very high burden of leishmaniasis have uh, established the treatment facilities as primary health care level. But because of these uh, many challenges, it is still uh, not uh, available in many countries at the primary health care level. And then vector and reservoir control, I already discussed that it is, uh, there is hardly any support for the vector control and the reservoir control in our region to many countries. So how we can uh, go about it? Uh, the, uh, to improve surveillance uh, and also to improve the accessibility to the case management, it is very important that the case management and surveillance are integrated up to the lowest possible healthcare delivery system. That is the primary healthcare level, 
at least uh, in the uh, areas where, yes, uh, which are high endemic, even we take a country, maybe not all the areas are high endemic for leishmaniasis, at least for the areas where the case, disease is highly endemic, if we can integrate the case management to primary health care level, that will be a very good uh, option to tackle the disease. And scaling up physical treatment, that is mainly cryotherapy and thermotherapy in the uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis high burden countries. Capacity building for case management. In our region specifically, to address this issue, uh, we have established a WHO collabor collaborating center in Tunisia. So that this WHO collaborating center is ready to provide the case management to all the countries in our region when, when there is a request. And then resource mobilization. As I mentioned, this is a kind of orphan disease. And uh, there is a very, very, uh, uh, I mean, there's a least attention from the donors for this disease. So it is, but somehow we are taking at the regional level, uh, uh, at the uh, WHO HQ level, as well as the regional level to mobilize uh, some resources to support the countries and we hope that we will be successful in that. And uh, uh, supply management, uh, under the WHO medicine donation program, already the countries uh, uh, which has a higher burden of visceral leishmaniasis, they are receiving medicines, and also there is a support from uh, HQ and also regional level to procure medicines to the country, so we are trying uh, our best to uh, provide the countries with quality assured antimonials. And then uh, conduct operational research. Uh, there is a support from uh, our TDR grant at HQ level, as well as from the regional level to support the countries to conduct research. Even uh, every, I think by uh, every two years, uh, this TDR small uh, grant is available for the countries. Even uh, this year, I think most of the country, uh, countries which sub submitted proposals on leishmaniasis were supported. So this is uh, of my presentation.